Located only about 40 minutes from the twinkling lights of Las Vegas is the hike to the Liberty Bell Arch. If you're just going to the arch and back, you're looking at a distance of right around four miles round trip with an elevation gain of 1,427 feet. However, if you're still feeling good after you get to the arch, this is the same trail that will take you to the Arizona Hot Springs as well. This makes for a much more substantial hike, and that's what we actually did in this video, but to see the continuation on down to the Hot Springs, you're gonna have to wait until next week. When you first start the trail, you're going to avoid the nice bridge on the left and instead drop down into the wash and make your way under the highway. A good amount of this hike will take place in soft sand, so be prepared to stop and empty out your shoes several times. If you plan on hiking this trail yourself, you need to make sure you're going during the right time of year. These trails are usually closed between the middle of May and the end of September due to excessive heat. There is absolutely no shade on this trail and it gets very hot here. So if you visit while it's closed, not only are you risking a ticket, but this hike could be deadly as well, so I would just skip it. Another thing you wanna watch out for on this hike is rain. There are a couple of parts on this trail and definitely a lot more if you're continuing to the hot springs where you will be in slot canyons. So if you get caught in the rain or there is even rain off in the distance, there is a chance you could get caught up in a flash flood. Speaking of slot canyons, we found a short slot to explore about nine tenths of a mile into the hike. If you've been spoiled to massive slot canyons like Buckskin Gulch, which I'll share the link to in the upper corner right now, this isn't really anything spectacular. But if you're already in the area, it was worth giving it about 5 or 10 minutes to check out. Almost immediately after leaving the short slot, you will be coming to a fork in the trail. If you're going to Liberty Bell Arch like we are, you're going to be making a right here. Going straight will take you to Arizona Hot Springs. If you plan on doing both, I highly recommend going to the arch first. It's quite a hike down to the hot springs and it wouldn't really make much sense to visit them before the arch. Shortly after the fork, you are going to start gaining some elevation. Nothing excessive, but enough to get you breathing a little bit. And you're also going to be entering some really unique landscapes. I don't know nearly as much about geology as I wish that I did sometimes, but we ended up climbing up through this canyon with these greenish rocks. They were really unique looking and we're definitely curious as to what gives them their greenish color. So if you know, please let us know in the comments below. We also ended up spotting a bunch of these bright white rocks as well. The climb will continue on for about half of a mile and you need to keep your eyes peeled to make sure you stay on the right trail. As you can see here, there was a curb with some rocks that marked which direction we needed to go to stay on the correct trail. Once you reach the top of the first climb, you should get a pretty spectacular view of the valley below. The break to celebrate was cut short though when we realized that we weren't exactly done climbing just yet. Luckily the second part of this climb is not anywhere near as long and it's pretty simple. And not only that, but once we reached the top of that second climb we realized that we were at some abandoned mines. According to our research, these are World War II era magnesium mines. And we also found out that supposedly there is an entrance to the mines somewhere around here. At the time of the recording of this video, we had no idea about that, so we might just have to go back and check it out. The good news is that at this point in the hike, you are done climbing for a little bit. But you will need to be careful on these downhills because they are covered in tiny little pebbles that we call marbles that are perfect for making you slip and go flying down the hill. As I say in most of our videos, shoes with a good amount of traction are going to make your life a lot easier here. And that's especially true if you plan on continuing on to the hot springs. The funny thing about this part in the hike is that we were both thinking, where the heck is this arch? Well, it turns out that it is in plain view, but it is just turned sideways to us. And you can actually see it right here. This kind of helped build up some anticipation and we were definitely not disappointed when we finally saw the size of the arch. And also when we saw it, the name of the arch started to make a whole lot more sense. Just in case you didn't know where it gets its name from, it stems from the fact that the hole in the middle of the arch has a strong resemblance to the actual Liberty Bell that now resides in Independence National Historic Park. We were fighting some serious wind gusts this day, but it did not stop us from reaching the Liberty Bell Arch. Once we got to the arch, I noticed a small trail that went up the right side of it, so I decided that I wanted to check it out. 
In the meantime, V, who usually I'll admit makes better decisions than I do, decided to go around the left side of the arch. I would definitely not recommend going around the right side like I did because it takes you up a steep and slippery hill to the arch. The view from the top is really nice, but it is not worth the risk of sliding back down the hill. The other problem is, once you get to the top of the hill, you're way too close to the arch to make it any type of solid photo up. The trail that V took on the other hand is much wider, less steep, and way less sketchy. And not only that, but it takes you to some prime photo ops if you want to get your picture with the arch in the background. It was really cool getting up close and personal with the arch so we could truly appreciate the massive scale of it. If you just plan on visiting the arch and not the hot springs, you do have one additional option that we didn't get to do in this video. The trail that you took up to the arch continues on for about half a mile as you can see right here. There is a bit more climbing involved, but it takes you to a beautiful viewpoint that looks out over the Colorado River. After hunkering down for a second so V didn't blow away in the wind, we started on our way back towards the fork because we still had quite a bit of hiking left to do if we planned on reaching the hot springs. We obviously knew that we had gone downhill on our way to the arch, but this climb back up is no joke. It's pretty rocky, steep, and slippery. The only good thing about the crazy wind is that it was helping keep us cool on the way back up the hill. Luckily, once you get to the top of the big climb, it is pretty much downhill all the way down to the fork. One thing is for sure, you definitely want to bring more water than you think you need on this hike. Even if you go when it's not particularly hot, this is a very unforgiving landscape and you don't want to get caught without water. The other thing is be sure to practice leave no trace principles. Luckily we only saw a couple of small pieces of trash on the trail that day and we picked them up. If we all do our part to take care of our trails, we can leave them pristine for generations to come. Be sure to stay tuned for part 2 of this video where we continue on to Arizona Hot Springs. It is a really awesome addition to this adventure and you definitely do not want to miss it. Well that is going to do it for this video. What are your favorite hot springs? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming adventures. And for all the information about the Liberty Bell Arch as well as other awesome Nevada adventures, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.